Hello, everybody. My name is Ray Hoover. I am the membership and sponsorship director here at the Minnesota High Tech Association, and I want to thank everyone for joining us on a very rainy uh, morning. I hope everyone's uh, made it to their offices all right. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the process for applying for a Techni Award. Um, this is our largest event of the year, and it's one of our tent poles for the organization. Uh, the Minnesota High Tech Association strives to make Minnesota a top five tech states, uh, and one of the ways we do that is we honor innovation that's happening here in Minnesota. And we do that by uh, presenting these awards to the companies that are making progress and really making us stand out uh, among all the other states. And, and uh, we're really excited about uh, the process this year. So today's presenters, I'll be doing most of the presenting. Uh, Jean from Code Savvy, the executive director, is our techni judge, and she's going to be giving her perspective on how that works and the things that they look for when they're uh, evaluating some of these submissions. And Chuck Lefebvre from Unisys is going to be joining us to talk about um, the application process. Unisys won an award last year, and he's kind enough to join us and talk about how they went through that process. Uh, we're also joined by uh, other MHTA staff, Claire Ayling. Um, and Patty Cruz. Claire will be able to answer questions as we're going uh, in the chat box uh, to the right in the um, in the webinar section there. So while we're going through, uh, if you have a question, try to enter it there, and then there will be some time at the end where we'll open it up for more questions. Now, without further ado, let's get going here. I know everybody's got a busy day. So the objectives today is to gain a better understanding of the award categories, the eligibility, uh, the rules, and the application process. We just want to make sure everyone has a clear, a clear idea of how this is going to work. So we're going to run through that as, as uh, uh, carefully as we can for you. Uh, we're going to pick up those additional insights uh, from Gene and from Chuck. And we're going to discuss the Lifetime Achievement Award nominations. That's uh, something new this year where we're going to allow members to um, you know, let us know who in the community have really stood out and driven uh, technology innovation in Minnesota. Uh, lastly, we're going to uh, make sure that we cover all of the key dates for this year's program when the application process ends um, and when some of the other key dates for events are going to be. Um, the webinar is also going to include um, an application demo. We're going to kind of run through that quickly for you and then again time at the end for Q&A. So we've divided um, the award categories this year into three different categories. The first is a vibrant tech ecosystem. Awards in this group reflect key players and programs that are essential to build a vibrant tech ecosystem for the state. They spark a passion for technology where previously there was none. They think outside the box to bring solutions to the challenges we face in closing the tech talent gap. They interconnect our community and make the world a better place. Uh, these individuals and organizations are the corner, cornerstone of prosperity for the state, and with them, we thrive. So we're really excited about these categories. We've got community impact, workforce development, and startup in this space. And I'll let you, there are a number of locations where you'll be able to read uh, more about the categories. And instead of reading through those, I'm going to let everybody kind of research where they feel like they need to be and, and more about those categories. The second grouping is technology advancement across industries. So awards in this group recognize technological advancements that span industries to benefit people and organizations around the world. The technologies within these categories are often intertwined with a mind-boggling complexity that drives efficiency and exponential growth while safeguarding people and business. The world is smaller and what, is, what used to be considered science fiction is now reality thanks to a lot of these advancements. And so we have cybersecurity, Cognitive computing, cloud computing, the Internet of Things, and Industry 4.0. And again, I'll let you uh, um, access uh, some of those uh, uh, descriptors uh, to figure out where you fit in for those. And then the last grouping is innovation in Minnesota's leading industries. Uh, awards in this group honor innovation within Minnesota's leading industries. The Bold North is a national leader in a wide variety of industries, including biosciences, clean technology, and renewable energy. From farm to table, Minnesota is an agricultural and food production powerhouse. Our impact uh, on the world can be felt in the expertise and innovations these fields bring in making our lives safer, healthier, accessible, and inspired. So we have biotech, clean tech, ag tech, MedTech, EdTech, and FinTech. 
So key dates for um, uh, the Techni Awards here. The applications are, are open right now, and they'll be open until August 9th. And we're going to close it at the end of the day on the 9th. On Friday, September 6th, is our deadline for the Lifetime Achievement nominations at the end of the day. On Tuesday, September 17th, the judges will, be, will fi have finalized kind of their thoughts on who should be finalists in each of those categories. And we will have a reception to announce those finalists. And everyone who applies for an award is invited to come and, and uh, mingle and uh, hear about the, the companies that have been selected and why. Uh, lastly, uh, the actual award ceremony is November 20th. That's a Wednesday. And that's going to be our large Techni Awards Gala. For those of you who've come before, um, you know, it's a great event. We get between seven and 800 attendees. Um, and it's really great. We have a red carpet and it's a really fun event. So next I'm going to talk about eligibility. Um, so there are two kind of ways to think about this. One is for companies that have uh, not applied before. And for our, uh, another grouping, it's past participants. Um, so you're allowed to apply again with the same technology that you did previously, but there are going to be some stipulations around that. First, um, you know, just generally science or technology companies and organizations who are doing business in Minnesota are eligible to apply. Uh, we require that the majority of the work uh, for the product or services and the team dedicated to that project for which the application is being submitted, they have to be Minnesota-based. So the team that's doing that work has to be here. Uh, MHDA membership is not required to apply for a Techni Award, though um, we would love to have you join as members. And there is no application fee. Um, all you have to do is go through the system and submit um, your technology. For past participants, if you applied last year, uh, the previous Techni Award recipients are not eligible to apply, to apply with the same initiative for which they previously received an award. So, for example, Chuck's um, um, award that they received at Unisys, he cannot apply uh, for um, an award for the same thing that he won from last year. Um, however, had he not won, uh, Chuck and Unisys would be able to apply, but they have to uh, be able to demonstrate growth and improvement of that initiative over the past year. So to apply, we have a Smarter Select platform. It's a really intuitive program um, that you can use to uh, uh, you know, fill out your information and submit all the necessary material. We're gonna go through that in a moment, um, but all you have to do is you have to create an account, make sure that the organization, um, you have approval from the organization to submit a technical application. And you know, we always advise that you review the entire application before you submit it. Um, you know, some questions are specific to an award category and they won't uh, appear in your actual application. So, you know, just to make sure that you're, you're really verifying each of the questions and, and all the information you're submitting. Uh, you can begin an application, you can save it, and then you can finish it at a later date. So you can do this piecemeal and make sure that you have um, the information, uh, you know, presented the way that you want it to. Um, but you have to press the final submit button before the deadline on August 9th. Um, you can also edit um, until August 9th. So um, a little more rules and notes. Uh, for each company, there are only two applications uh, eligible per organization. A lot of companies are doing um, a lot of different things, um, but we really want to make sure that we're, we're casting a broad net and giving everyone an opportunity to apply for these awards. So two applications per organization. All those uh, applications have to be unique. Um, and it has to apply directly or refer uh, clients to apply directly to the site. Um, so for science and technology startup, that's one of the categories. Some stipula stipulations exist there. Uh, early stage science or technology companies with, uh, they have to have commercialized products. And in 2018, they had to have less than $5 million in revenue. It's a required field um, as you're applying, um, but that is not going to be disclosed publicly. Um, that's just for verification that you fit the category. Um, lastly, 50% or more of the employees have to be based here in Minnesota. Um, so we're going to hear a little more from uh, Gina Chuck in a, in, a, in a second here, but a, a couple other tips. Uh, you really want to include specific quantifiable information. The more information you can include about um, your technology and how um, you know, you're really advancing that category, um, I think the better you'll do. 
there is an option to attach a supporting material uh, to help the selection committee make an informed decision. Um, it is uh, 20 megabytes max, and there's the opportunity to uh, to submit one. So, for example, you uh, if you have a number of these things, you can compile them into one document and submit that. And some examples could be a product or service brochure, a photo, a short video, or you know some stakeholder testimonial. So next, we're going to hear from Jean Weiss. Um, she is the executive director at Code Savvy, and she is a Technie Awards judge. And so, Jean, I'm going to pass it off to you. You can talk talk to us a little bit about uh, the process for um, uh, evaluating some of the submissions. Hi, everyone. Um, I am Jean Weiss. I have been a judge for two years, and I will be a judge again in 2019. Uh, we were also Code Savvy. One of our programs, our educator program, was also a Technie Award winner in uh, 2017 in the STEM education category that is no longer exists. Um, but so I have experience across the board. Uh, the process is once all the submissions are done, the, um, the judges are are, the judges are grouped into the different categories. So um, community impact, workforce, uh, workforce development, et cetera. There are different judges for each of those categories. I think there's usually six to eight judges per category. Sometimes uh, a judging group may, group may judge more than one category. Um, the judges are then given uh, some all the information from each of the applicants. Uh, they then um, pull together, each of them individually pulls together their thoughts about each of the applicants in the category. And then th we, there is a meeting where uh, we all get together um, and from all of our expertise and what we've read, and seen if you've provided uh, videos or um, brochures or whatever, we then um, come up with the top three in that meeting and we also determine the top uh, winner in the category. Um, as, um, as, we, as was stated, the, um, the, there is a pre-announcement of the top three in the category and then um, at the Techni Awards, the winners of each each category are um, are named. Uh, as far as what we look for, um, as noted, data and and how you have grown, improved, and very specific data is really important. Uh, generalized statements um, such as we have uh, grown significantly, needs to be followed up with very precise data. In 2017, we were this large. In 2018, we grew in this particular arena by this much. Um, and how you actually uh, provided that growth. Um, the other thing we look for is thoughtful responses. Uh, don't wait till the last minute to do the submittal. It is a very, uh, you need to be very thoughtful and you need to show your passion. Passion is, and innovation is what we're looking for. We want, um, we want applicants who have, who really care about their uh, community and um, what they have done for the community. Um, the, there are questions. Be sure and, and address each aspect of a given question. Um, I, I believe everything is has a certain uh, a number of words or characters or whatever as to your response. Be sure to write them out in a separate format. Make sure that they are uh, that you really are covering what needs to be covered, and that you show you care. Uh, we also do look, they should be well written. 
you should read them carefully. You should have several pairs of eyes look at them. Uh, it, it, it helps to formulate, for a group to formulate the thoughts and to put it down on paper. I know when we were doing it, we, um, we had three or four people reviewing it, every little minor change we reviewed. Um, so I think um, the last thing I want to mention is you need to be sure you're in the right category. Um, if you have any questions about whether you should be in category A or category B, you can certainly reach out. I believe Claire Eiling is the uh, contact, um, but it is on the website. Um, be sure you feel that you are in the right category because you will be weighed against other people in that category. Um, so that's really all my comments. I wish you all the best of luck. Um, it's a fun process and I think you'll learn a lot about your organizations as you go out, go fill out the application. Thank you, Jean. Thanks questions. for serving as a, as a judge again and uh, we, uh, we look forward to uh, 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 seeing where this goes again and I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what categories you're going to get. All right. So we're going to move on. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Chuck Lefebvre, and he is uh, at Unisys, and he's going to talk about the process for uh, submitting a Techni award and what that was, uh, what that whole process was like for he and his team. Chuck. Yeah, thank you very much, Ray, and great job, Gene, um, giving some really good advice. Uh, I'll emphasize a couple of those points in my comments here. Um, Unisys is a large international company. It's an IT company. We have an office in Egan, Minnesota, but uh, only a small part of our work is done in Minnesota, but we believe an important part of that work. Our corporate headquarters is in Bluebell, Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia. I say that just to give some context. Um, we We have a great sense of pride in the win that we had last year. We submitted uh, an application last year in 2018. Um, we were fortunate enough to win and felt it was very much worth the effort looking back on on doing that uh, in the effort to do the this put the submission together. Um, we did a press release uh, to our normal communication channels that we had won. Um, the The local team is proudly displaying the physical award, which is an impressive award in a place in our office in Egan for visitors to see as well as employees. It, uh, we celebrated that win and, and do every day when we're visiting, when we have others come to our office. And we've used it externally um, as we have put, uh, put information about it in our corporate overview presentation uh, in an industry recognition section at the corporate level, there's a little uh, logo of MHTA and the Techni Award uh, indicating the recognition we've gotten for our product as a result of winning. So bottom line, uh, make the effort. We felt it was worthwhile uh, in, uh, in the recognition we got, both for the team internally in the company as well as we're leveraging it externally. Uh, we've been doing... Uh, Techni Award applications for a number of years. Um, probably eight, nine years ago, we helped one of our clients prepare an award. And that's something as uh, IT companies or service providers, if you and your client are uh, think you've got a winner in something you did together, uh, go ahead and help them do that. We did that. Uh, it was a solution that we contributed. We did most of the application work, but the solution was our clients. It was submitted under their name, and they were selected a winner. Um, and, and we were proud of that, but they were too. They got all of the press for doing it, but we could leverage it in different ways. Subsequent to that, over the last six years, approximately every other year, we, we submitted applications and always were selected a finalist. Uh, one of the three finalists in each category in the, uh, are, are selected. We were a finalist every year. And as they say, ever a bridesmaid, never a bride until last year when we were fortunate enough to win. 
in our case, we're doing enough innovation and product development that each of those three submissions were on completely unrelated products. So in none of those cases I would consider a resubmission, but they were rather new submissions um, by different product teams uh, on the products that they'd created. Some specific advice, um, while the process is relatively straightforward, it, it does take some work and as Jean said, um, you want it to be quality in the way it's written and prepared and presented. Good grammar, good terms, good perspective. So start now. Don't wait till the last week and jump on it and think you're going to have a quality submission. Start now. Um, go ahead and put it in towards the end, but, but get working on it now. Gene talked about continuous improvement, review, iterate, update, uh, work on it regularly to, to clarify the message. She also mentioned that um, there's a character limit in each of the sections. Be aware of that up front so you're not surprised when you're actually doing the formal submission that it doesn't fit and you need to recast the wording. In our case, our submissions in all three of the cases where we were doing it on our behalf were done by the product development teams, uh, engineering teams, software engineering teams that are based here in Minnesota. Um, they, of course, are very proud of the work they do, but sometimes uh, if, you're, if you're submitting a, a, an application like that from an engineering team in particular, um, get someone else to help you with it. The engineers tend to talk too much about how it was done and the technical details rather than the value that it brings to the marketplace or um, the value to the community. Um, more about why it's important is what you should be focusing on. Uh, our products were on uh, leading edge, new product development, new releases to the market. So we couldn't focus on, wow, look at this revenue it produced, therefore, it's a fabulous product. We, we really needed to focus on um, why this is a great product, why it's what differentiates it in the market, not the technical nuances of the bits and bytes. And I think we learned that uh, in our uh, subsequent um, uh, submissions, and maybe that helped last time. Uh, lastly, um, to achieve that last uh, goal that I mentioned about focusing on market, we engaged other people outside the organization um, that was close to it as reviewers. Uh, even somebody outside of the company that might be in that same market space, you might have a friend, a former colleague, whatever, use those as reviewers. Challenge, have someone challenge what you're saying. Why, why do you, you know, as Gene said, justify this with raw data. Uh, go outside, go to somebody at a distance, have them review it, not just your inner circle. Go to an outer circle or an outer ring in your ecosystem and say, hey, from your perspective, what do you think of this? Does it, does it ring true? Is it talking about the right things? So those are my uh, pieces of advice. Hopefully it helps you to uh, have a more rewarding and perhaps a successful selection as a winner in one of your Techni uh, Awards uh, categories. Ray, back to you. Thank you, Chuck, and congratulations again on Unisys's win in, in 2018. All right, so I'm gonna move on. We're gonna talk a little bit about the Lifetime Achievement Award, and then we're gonna run through a few other things before we get to some questions at the end here. So the uh, Lifetime Achievement Award, uh, we really wanna make sure that we're uh, uh, rewarding and honoring the, uh, the history of technological innovation in Minnesota. And so we're asking members uh, to submit nominations uh, before September 6th. And the really the three main pieces there, are, we really want them to be an exceptional Minnesota leader with 15 years uh, measurable impact in Minnesota and 25 years of documented tech accomplishments. Um, so if you know of anyone, um, feel free to submit and uh, learn more at techneawards.org. Um, next, I wanted to cover, um, you know, the, the finalist reception. That is going to be on Tuesday, September 17th. 
Um, and it's going to be hosted by Robbins Kaplan at 800 LaSalle, um, Suite 2800. It's complimentary. We would like you to RSVP. Um, it's from 4.30 to 6.30. It's a great event every year. Um, you know, you get to see who uh, are made the finalists, and usually there's a lot of celebration uh, for the folks that uh, have made the cut. Um, and then finally, the award ceremony is going to take place on Wednesday, November 20th. Um, it's going to be at the Minneapolis Convention Center. That's a photo from last year. Finalists are going to receive one free ticket or reduced price on the table for the entire team. Um, and you can register at techniewards.org. Individual tickets are $195, um, and price is going to go up after uh, the 23rd of October. And tables of 10 are $1,800. And again, price go, goes up after October 23rd. VIP tables uh, with access to the VIP reception uh, prior to the award ceremony are $2,800. Um, and finally, I wouldn't be doing my job and, and uh, um, uh, with, with talking about the Tech Awards if I didn't mention that there are sponsorship opportunities available for the event. Um, they range from $15,000 all the way down to $5,000 and include opportunities to introduce an award category and a recipient, kick off uh, the ceremony with a toast, uh, host a table of 10, welcome guests at, at the reception I mentioned, and include an ad in the event program. Um, if you're selected as a finalist, it might be a great additional opportunity to uh, gain some recognition for the company. Now, next, I'm going to run through just a quick application demo. You know, how do you get to the Smarter Select platform? Uh, you know, what are some uh, some actual things we need to be looking for as we're running through this? Um, and again, I want to mention that uh, Claire is answering questions on the side, and she'll be available to answer questions if there are any specific ones um, on this uh, portion of the presentation here. So on techniewards.org, there's going to be a, a big red button at the top, um, apply now. All you do is you click that, and it's going to take you to um, a, a link that shares in more information about the categories, as I said, the, the paragraphs that kind of are big descriptors of uh, what happens in each of those categories. And Claire is going to share a link um, with more information about the application in the chat box now. Um, all you do at the next uh, uh, page after you click Apply Now is uh, 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 press Apply. And it's going to bring you to the first page here. And it's going to ask you for some basic uh, information. It's pretty straightforward. And uh, you fill out uh, these fields and you move on. If you did apply last year, um, your account is still active. Uh, so, for example, uh, my account is still active from giving this presentation last year. And so what I did when I went through here is I, I just went through that again. Um, I made a company last year and, and did a, a fake presentation or submission. So my company, Ghostbusters LLC, has made significant progress this year. So uh, we want to display that in our 2019 Techni submission. Uh, on this page, I'm filling out general information. Uh, making sure that, uh, you know, the organization description and some of the specifics are mentioned. Um, and then I need to go on and select my category. Um, and so I'm, you know, I'm thinking, geez, I, I think, you know, uh, uh, containing spook specters and ghosts in a, a biocontainment unit is probably good for biotech. So I'm going to go through and select that. And then I've got some more specific uh, uh, questions about the award application. Uh, if your company, like the Ghostbusters, is a repeat submission, you're going to be asked to justify or demonstrate significant improvements uh, for the application. So, like like I said, um, you know, my uh, uh, my improvements are going to be that uh, security improvements for the containment system uh, now prevent the unwanted uh, release of ghosts. Um, you know, don't need to worry about any from from the EPA demanding I shut it off. Um, so that's great. So after that, uh, I, we really wanted to point out um, there's going to be a question on that page um, for the forum this year that helps applicants and judges uh, be certain that each applicant is in the correct category. And so that's a question on category alignment. Uh, advise why you chose the award category. Um, so it's, it's going to be a, another one of the ways that we justify or you can justify for yourself why you chose that specific category and for us to evaluate um, whether or not we feel it's in, in the right space. Um, after you're done submitting everything, you can see behind here I've got uh, optional uh, to submit the additional information. I can do that here. Um, and I can go back to any places before or after, you know, um, I'm putting some of this information in, and I can submit uh, down below the green button here. 
um, after I'm done, um, you know, I, I'll want to make sure that everything is correct. So when it uh, asks me to describe the project or innovation in much more depth in a series of questions, um, you know, for those pages, um, I can gather additional data, put it in the file. Um, and again, you can always log off and continue at a later date. So once you feel comfortable, you can submit the application and uh, edit it until uh, August 9th. Uh, once you're done, you'll get this confirmation uh, uh, page here that's going to say thank you very much for uh, submitting an application and get a little more information about some of the other dates. So um, that's pretty much all we've got for uh, the presentation here today. Um, we'll leave a little bit of time open. Um, if anybody has any additional questions, we can uh, continue to answer them on the chat screen here. Um, we are also available to answer questions on the phone or through email if anybody has them. Um, thanks so much for everybody uh, who joined us today. We really appreciate it and we really look forward to seeing your submissions this year for the Techie Awards. And we hope that you join us on November 20th. Thanks and have a great day.